So let's talk about the acts of kindness that you have experienced from people. Okay. The most act of kindness I can remember, most of them have gotten from strangers. At times you expect act of kindness from family, relatives, friends, but you get it from strangers. Like for me, during this lockdown, I happened to be locked. I had gone home to see my son, whom happened to be staying at my sister's place for a while. Then when I went there, the president announced the lockdown, so I was locked there. So I did have a means of coming back to Nairobi. And since I work and live in Nairobi, it was a bit challenging for me. So I had to look for ways of coming back to Nairobi. And I didn't want to use the Panya routes because uh, it, was, uh, it was a bit tricky. And... Um, you could be when you you were caught you were taken to quarantine at your own cost you see so and also the condition of the baby because of the times the means of transport we used to use was uh, motorbikes and with my baby's condition uh, using a motorbike a long journey it's a bit uh, risky so i decided that i wasn't going to use a panya route but use the right channel to reach back to nairobi because even my job was at stake so I approached several people, several private people. I remember there was one doctor who has a clinic in, in Machakos. My sister approached him and he said that for him to ferry me back to Nairobi, I give him 3K. So I was like, this is a doctor who even who understands um, cerebral palsy because I explained him the, the reason. So he told me, you know what, if I'm to carry you back to Nairobi, he has a private clinic. He's a consultant at uh, level five Machakos and he has his own private clinic. I won't mention the name. But uh, he said if if uh, if he is to take me back to Nairobi, pay him three thousand. You see, and uh, I I go to him and consult so that he gives me a medical report for the baby to show the police, which also he was charging three thousand. So you have to give him a total of six. 000. Yes, for him to take me to Nairobi, and, you don't have and I don't have a job by then, mm -hmm. and with the condition of the baby. You see, so I told him that was too much. I put it afford. Then he said, okay, go to the level five. They give you um, a medical report. Then me, I will, you just fuel my car. You put three thousand. So I was like, from my chapels to Nairobi, is this car going to take three thousand? So I told him, okay, me, I'm unable to raise that money. It's okay, I'll look for other means. So the doctor was like, wherever, you know. So. Uh, as I had said earlier, I work and live in Nairobi, and my baby has to go for therapies. These kids, they have to go for therapies regularly, or else their condition may worsen, you know. So, so since the therapy, the, the therapist I was seeing was in Nairobi, the pediatrician I used to see was in Nairobi, and also the gyna was in Nairobi because he has, not the gyna, sorry, pediatrician, he was in Nairobi, and then... Um, the neurologist, the pedi neurologist is also in, in Nairobi. For, this pre for the medication, for the pre prescriptions for the medications, you have to get them from a neurologist, not from a normal doctor. And they do it monthly. So by then, the, the prescription I had had already expired. Most of these medications, like we use Rivotril, it was very scarce by then, you could get it anywhere. So you have to come, you see a neuro, gives your prescription, then you go and get it from the counter. Because for the pharmacy, they can't sell it direct to you without a prescription. So yeah. so that's why I had to come back to Nairobi, mm -hmm. number one, because of the medical prescription and also for the therapies. Mm -hmm. And most of that, I used to work in Nairobi and my job was at stake. And you see, I'm the provider. You see, that's where I'm going to get the money even to buy the medication. So I had to come back to Nairobi at all cost. Yeah. Yes. So now, uh this doctor has said that they are not going, they want you to fuel your car, you can't afford the money. What, is, what happened after that? So when when uh, this doctor told me now, the only option I had was to give him the tricky and go to the level 5 and get this pr the prescription there, I said to look for other means. So we approached this Matatu Circles, used to ferry goods, luggages from Nairobi to Machakos. So we went several circles, they refused. They said if it was only me alone, they would carry me. But now if I have a baby, they won't risk. So I approached like three of them. They refused. Then the fourth one, somebody referred us to one of... Even that circle itself refused. But one of the ladies there told us, referred us to one of the drivers. He told me, talk to the driver. So I'm going to give you his number. He's a nice guy. He can help you. 
So he gave us the number. We called the driver. The driver told us we meet tomorrow. To, we talk one on one. So I went and explained to him my condition. I told him the condition of the baby and that I was in entire need of coming back to Nairobi. And there was no way I could leave the baby. I told him the other circles have agreed to ferry me but without the kid. But I, there was no way I was going to leave the baby behind. So, so he said, okay, if that's the case, I'm going to carry you. If we are going to be taken to quarantine together, well and good. But you just pray. He told me, do you pray? Do you go to church? I said, yes. He said, then he told me, you pray that nothing happens. So we agreed the following day that Baheta be there. He was going to carry me my baby and my bag. And that's what happened. The following day, Baheta was there. He came, he carried us. When we reached to the ch checkpoint at uh, the river, the Ascari came and he was like, why are you carrying this woman? Why are you taking me the baby? You know, we are not allowing people going to Nairobi. Now, like now, the disease was at high peak by then. It was June. So it was like, this mama is taking a child to the hospital. So the baby has missed some therapies and as well has missed some check, uh, some checkouts. So she really wants to go back to Nairobi and that's why I'm just helping her to get to Nairobi. So now they ask her, ask me, mama, what's your problem? What's the condition of the baby? I had only these uh, people with disability card. I just showed him the card I gave him, he read. Then he asked me, do you work with the, the county council of Nairobi? I said no. Because I think he saw that word of council people with disability, so he thought I was working with the county council, which is not. I said no. Then he said, okay, you are taking your baby to the hospital, Kenyatta or where? I said no, I'm going to Nairobi hospital. He said, okay, fine. You stay there, don't get out. The, doc the, the driver can get out for his temperatures to be checked, but for you, just stay in the car. So I was like, wow, God, it's a damn deal. So the, the, the driver got out, he was checked his temperature, and there we left to Nairobi. So we came, we reached to Nairobi. The driver was so nice along the road, by the way. He bought me some sodas and some bananas for the baby. And he asked me if, they, if, I, if I needed anything else he could do for me. So I told him I was fine. The baby doesn't take soda, he takes uh, milk. So he decided to buy him yogurt. I bought him that small yogurt for the baby. So we came out to Nairobi. Along the road, we also carried another lady. So we were, we were two ladies and the driver and my son. So this lady was sitting beside me. But I'm a cue. He didn't have anything to do with us. Like when my son used to step on, I was like, used to look my my son. He used to look at my son so in a weird way. I'm like, what's the problem? So when my son would step on her, he was like, he would push my baby's legs like this. And I expected him to, as a lady, to understand more. So I remember even a time the driver asked her, why don't you even help this lady to carry the handbag? And you can see she has a baby and the baby has a condition. So she took my handbag just because the, the driver had instructed her to do so. But uh, deep in her heart, she, she, she wasn't willing to do so. So that was... Uh, that's what happened. So upon reaching Nairobi, the lady alighted. I was left with the, with, the, with the driver. We had to go to the offices because he was carrying some goods and some luggages to deliver to the office. So we went. He offloaded when I was still in the car. Then as then he came and opened the door for us. So it was, as I was putting my baby on the back, he asked me, are you going to carry the baby that way? I was like, yes, no problem. So... Little did I know he had, re he had realized that my, my baby had gone for a long call. So he was like, no, 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 no. Let me take you somewhere and uh, you change your baby. I told him, no, no, don't worry. Home is not far. I'm just saying that um, the man, I'm, I'm just going to border my tattoo there. So don't worry. He said, no, no, no. I'm a father. I have kids. I know. So you let's go. I show you somewhere. You change your baby. He asked me, or is it, oh, maybe you don't have a diaper. He told him, no, I have a diaper. Then he said, okay, let's go. So he went to the offices there. They have some staff toilets and uh, he told one of the staffs give this lady a chair they gave me a chair and they gave me some tissue i changed my baby and uh, i went back to the van he also helped me to get a good um, trolley man who carried my luggages up to the stage and then made sure that they were on the boat so according to me that was a very high act of kindness I've ever seen, especially from a stranger and especially from a man who doesn't know you. Yes. There is also another act of kindness I received from a conductor. 
applying this route of uh, from Kikuyu to Gangware. I can't remember the, the either the number plate of the matatu or even maybe the image of the conductor. But one day happened, I was taking my baby for for some checkup. He wasn't feeling well. Then I was just standing at the stage carrying my baby at the back. Then I stopped this matatu. When it stopped, the conductor came out and um, I think he just looked at me. Then he was like, let me help you untie the baby. He untied my baby from my back and told me, hand out the car. He opened the front seat, I entered, and after entering, he gave me my son. Then we went up to Kongwari upon reaching uh, Shell Petro Station when when the bus had, I was about to alight. He, he came, he opened the door for us. He also helped me lift the baby again, put on my back. He took my hand back and gave me. So I was like, why is this conductor doing all this for me? And there were ladies there. They never noticed that I had a baby that even alighting for Mama Tattoo with a special kid is a problem, you know. But this conductor realized even i never told him anything he could realize and see that i really needed some help and he helped me so i really appreciate for that act of kindness from a conductor whom i never know and have to read i have never met him